Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I would like to share with you two shift dresses that are inspired by Yves Saint Laurent's Mondrian dresses from 1965. Um, Yves Saint Laurent made quite a few of the Mondrian dresses and so here's a picture of the three of them. And of course, the most famous one is the one uh, in the foreground. Um, this particular one here, made uh, with three primary colors, uh, yellow, red, and blue. And it is also this dress that is the inspiration uh, for the first dress that I will share with you today. Uh, Yves Saint Laurent, of course, needs no introduction for anyone who is interested in fashion or design. Um, however, uh, the artist that inspired uh, Yves Saint Laurent uh, is not as uh, well known, uh, Piet Mondrian. Piet Mondrian was a Dutch painter uh, born in 1872, and originally he painted landscape, still life, etc. However, in the early 20th century, he became influenced uh, by the Cubism movement um, exemplified by artists such as uh, Pablo Picasso. And so here are two pictures by, uh, two paintings by uh, Picasso. And the one on the left is from 1909 to 1910 and it's called Seated Nude. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a nude woman sitting down. And the picture is located at London's uh, Tate Modern. And the one on the right of your screen is from uh, 1910, and it's called Girl with a Mandolin, and it's located at uh, New York City's Museum of Modern Art. And of course, Mondrian later developed his own style. And so here are two paintings uh, by Mondrian. Uh, number one is called Tableau Two, and it's from 1922. And the one on your right um, is called Composition, and it's from 1929. And both of these Mondrian's paintings are located in New York City's Guggenheim Museum. Now, that, now back to the dresses. Um, so the first dress that I will share with you today is the one I'm wearing right now. And this one, as you can see, um, I copied the design of the, uh, the first uh, Mondrian dress. Uh, however, I did omit the bottom portion uh, because I did not have the appropriate yellow fabric for this particular uh, project. And so for this one, uh, I made it entirely, the outer shell is entirely made with cotton. And so here is a close up of the fabric itself. Um, and also this is the bag. And so this one, it may, the fabric may look a bit familiar to you because the red gingham and the black gingham are the leftover uh, from the projects that I talked about in my video of 33. And also the white uh, fabric is a leftover bed sheet uh, for my quilting project talked about in my video number 12. To make this shift dress, I turned to the tried and true new, new look N6633 BUA pattern. Obviously, this dress being so famous, many people have made this dress before. Uh, for example, a contestant in uh, a British sewing bee uh, made a color block version of this dress. And also, uh, the UK's Sew Magazine's website also offers a free uh, pattern uh, for this Mondrian-inspired top. And I will link it in the description box below. Most of these uh, instructions on constructing the Mondrian uh, dress or top tells you to you know cut out various pieces and then uh, sew them up together and however I find this method um, gives you a very small margin of error because if I am not perfectly accurate in my measuring my cutting and my sewing the final assembled piece might be quite off from uh, from the correct size uh, of the pattern piece. And so what I did was I just reversed the process. I did uh, basically eyeball, you know, various sort of proportions of various sizes. Then I connected them. So for example, in this one, 
each horizontal portion is sort of one unit. So these two are the same size and I connected them with this black stri st uh, strip here. Then I sewed that a black, uh, a wider black strip. Then I did the second one. So then I did separately uh, the yellow, uh, I'm sorry, the, the red gingham and the white portion and connect them with uh, this vertical bl uh, black stripe. Then before I connected these two portions, I kind of figured out, okay, where they should go. And once I decided I was happy with the placement, that's when I sewed up connecting these two. And so this one also is connected with the, the black stripe here. And then, uh, so here you go. So then I also connect these two first, you know, these, these two and this one are, is one unit. And then also I connect them here together. So that's how I determine uh, sort of the placement of the three vertical sections uh, that made up the front of the dress. So here's the picture of how I cut it out. So after I placed it, uh, co you know, combined the smaller pieces, I laid out the, the assembled piece on the cutting mat and just placed my, uh, the, the pattern for the dress over it. And this way, when I cut out the pattern for the dress front, it is exactly the right size for the dress. And also I did the same thing uh, for the back. And this way, uh, so there was no issue of, uh, you know, the final assembled piece being either too large or too small for the dress. And uh, one thing about this was, I don't believe the original uh, Mondrian dress by Yves Saint Laurent has a, um, has a bust stars. But I decided to keep the bust stars because I feel that the final dress will hang better on me. And so that was what I did. However, I didn't realize that was after I constructed the garment and putting it on, uh, this vertical stripe here, instead of being a fairly horizontal one, became a bit of a concave, you know, instead of like it goes, became like this. And uh, I think because of the darts, you know, affected the, the front portion. And so what I did was I had to uh, lower, unfortunately I had plenty of seam allowance um, for all these pieces. So I was able to lower this lower uh, uh, portion of the black stripe. And then, so it, so it would give the, um, the sort of illusion of a vert, uh, horizontal line. And um, I also reduced the black portion uh, by the same amount. So the entire thing is pushed down. So it goes from this way to more of a down, so to a vertical line. So that's what I did. But in the back, I didn't have that same issue. And um, so I do think that if you decide to omit the bus stars, you would not need to make this adjustment. I think the straight across, uh, let's say a 90 degree, you know, from this would, would suffice. And also for this dress, um, originally it was supposed to be a practice version. However, the entire dress from beginning to end took me about 35 hours actually. Um, just because there was a constant um, adjustments that needed to make uh, to be made to ensure that all the seam lines match up. And then, for example, you know, this has to match up. And then there's also a side uh, stripe here, and then how the front and the back need to match up. And the same thing on this side. And also the center back zipper uh, is in between these two little black stripes. So there were just a lot of pattern matching going on uh, for this one. So I would estimate about maybe 50 to 60 percent of the total time that I spent on this dress was spent on, on picking. Um, so it, in a way it kind of tested a bit of my tolerance level for unpicking. Um, but I just plow through. I am really glad I persevered because I'm really happy uh, with the final result. And then for this one, I lined it with a uh, silk crepe de chine um, because I saw that you know being the light color I wanted to be a bit thicker in the lining uh, so it would give me more opacity so I'm very happy how this worked out so here is a quick uh, video of uh, this uh, the first Mondrian inspired dress and I paired it with a pair of three and a half inch wedge and I saw that you know because the wedge kind of disappears into the legs so the dress itself really takes center stage and so I'm very happy 
how this works out and uh, it really is uh, worth the time that I spent on it. The second Mondrian inspired dress that I will share with you today um, is this one uh, made uh, from a, a dark cream and chocolate brown uh, wool suiting fabrics. And so here is a close-up of the, uh, the fabric itself. So, uh, so this design um, actually uh, was uh, very much influenced by a Vogue pattern that came up on my search result when I was first um, searching the Mondrian dresses. And so this one, I thought it was perfect uh, as my second project um, because I, need, I wanted to make something a bit simpler in terms of pattern matching from the first one. And, um, but still, you know, some color blocking uh, to give it some interest. However, being forever the tinkerer myself, I decided to add uh, two pockets. So uh, it's a little hard to see, but I added two pockets here in the front, uh, just to give it a little more interest. And to sort of honor the Mondrian sort of cubism design, I decided to add uh, the center uh, stripe here that is not present um, at the uh, on the Vogue pattern. But I thought it was you know kind of cool, and so very happy how this uh, turned out. It's a simple design, but has a bit of an interest, you know, both in the front because of the pockets, and also the center stripe in the back. And for this one, this cream uh, wool suiting fabric frays incredibly easily. And because I do not want to uh, serge or overlock it, because serging tends to add bulk to the seam. So for this one, I decided to try uh, pinking, uh, using the pink shears on this one. And I was really surprised how well it worked out. It just, um, it just works incredibly well. It stopped the, um, the, uh, the fray immediately. So for example, here is a close up of the, the pinking itself. And I just did this throughout and it worked incredibly well. So I do think I would, you know, use my pinking shears a lot more often. Um, in the future. And also another uh, sort of word noting know part about uh, this dress is actually the lining itself. So for this one, I, uh, I lined it, uh, so this is the front of the lining itself. So I lined it uh, where the white portion is a uh, uh, silk crepe de chine, uh, that's a leftover from this project. And the bottom is a chocolate brown uh, china silk. And so, uh, so what happened? So, as, as you can see by now, I'm getting pretty proficient in pattern matching, and so, so even the uh, the lining itself uh, has pattern matching. And so, this one I designed it so that the white part extends about one inch below from the cream portion on the outside. Um, and so, so then you know, if I lift up my arm. The, the dark brown lining uh, will not show. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do the two-tone uh, lining is because um, sometimes you do see the lining, you know, people can see your lining uh, just from you know, your normal movement. So I wanted to have a sort of matching lining for the skirt portion portion and that was the reason for doing the color blocking for the lining and I'm really glad how this worked out it um, it almost looks just as good um, on the inside as it is on the outside so overall I am very happy uh, how this uh, second dress worked out and an interesting part about the second dress or these two dresses is that even though I cut them out from the same uh, pattern, but this wool, the wool version just fits a lot more loosely than the cotton version. And I think it's just the inherent uh, properties of different fabrics. So I thought that was really interesting. So here is a quick video of the second uh, Mondrian inspired uh, wool dress. And I paired this dress uh, with also the same three and a half inch wedge. Uh, to give a uh, focus uh, to the stress. 
And overall, I'm very happy how this works out. It is exactly what I had hoped it would be. And um, so I'm very pleased about that. Even though the second dress also took me about 20 hours from beginning to end. These are the two dresses that I recently made that are inspired by Yves Saint Laurent's Mondrian dresses. I hope you have enjoyed this video and please do stay safe and I hope I will see you soon. Bye bye!